digitalization can be a scary thing for a lot of retailers and I say scary because it, it talks about algorithms and black box. So if you look at the kind of evolution of pricing, a lot of retailers, because retailers love Excel, <laughs> whether it's for price optimization or price planning or whether it's for forecasting or you know just basic assortment and financial planning is we all love spreadsheets, we're all comfortable with Excel. And you know, a lot of retailers today are really doing the rudimentary, um, I'll take 50% off now, or I'll take 25% 25, 25 off now of these categories, 50% off, and then everything else I'll clear or I'll, I'll just throw away. And that's such a shame because it's really leaving so much money on the table. There's no, there's no science there at all. But if you look at the next, uh, the next piece, that would be around rules-based pricing. So rules-based pricing is really, uh, really saying, okay, I want to achieve this amount of profitability for this category. So my net or gross margin I want to have is 15%. Or, and um, I need to sell through within so many weeks. And if I do a markdown, it would be this percentage, this many times. Um, so that's kind of the intermediate step. And that's something that, that um, tools like PMM have embedded, which is great because then it's linked to the executional piece. You can figure out how many, how many markdowns or how many promotion prices, new prices you want to send down to the store level. Because that's a key piece, the execution piece at the store level. You know, stores are very busy and we tell them to concentrate on quality of service and, and make sure that you're selling and making sure that, that the shelves are filled, filled. But we have to remember when we change a price, there's a big impact at the store level. So that, that would be changing the price labels, um, making sure you've got the right product in the location if you're moving the locations around. And stores can only do so many price changes in any one day. So it really, really needs to be linked. So that we've talked about the, the kind of basic spreadsheet pricing, uh, rules-based pricing, and the link to the execution. Just taking a step back, price optimization is clearly the most sophisticated, and uh, that's where some retailers are working today. Um, it can be in-house so that we can run that for you, we can run that for the retailer uh, with our own consulting teams, or it can be off-site, an ASP type of model. So it's really, they're, they're kind of the three different areas. So the spreadsheet, the intermediate, which is rules-based price, and then price optimization. So if you look at the infrastructure of a retailer, whether it's hard line, soft lines, grocery, you know, it's all retail at the end of the day. You have some sort of ERP system, some sort of system of record that holds your master data. They all have some sort of business intelligence. So they do the reporting and data mine and analysis. You take it up a notch into the merchandising space. Um, you're really going to start with your financial and key items, your financial and key item planning, strategic planning, looking at two to five years out. And again, this is something that's prevalent in the soft lines area, but the lines are blurring. It's moving over more into the hard lines grocery area. So, what am I? What's my receipt plan? What's my gross margin? What's my net margin target? My intakes based on weeks. And that's linked into the lower level assortment plan so that you can figure out what items you need. Um, then you do your clustering that we, we spoke about, so making sure you understand the plan by attribute, making sure that you're planning by back to school or by demographics or by weather, whatever that is. Getting the target assortment at the lower level, not at the store level, but maybe store cluster level. Um, then that fills into space and uh, cash flow management piece. So really looking at, okay, now I know what my ideal assortment is based on the store group level. Um, how much space does toothpaste have in a store? And not, and not only that, what are the adjacencies? Where does it go on the shelf? Because it really is impacted if it's at eye level and they sell less than it's at this lower level. So there's all sorts of technology that JDA brings to the table that can really help understand the cannibalization, the affinities of those types of, those types of questions. So then once you figure out how much um, and where it goes on the shelf, where does that you know, health and beauty aid go in the store? Is it the front of the store, the back of the store? Is it gondola? Is it you know, JPEGs? Whatever. And we have some great technology that helps retailers plan um, this virtualization, like a 3D walk around the store to understand how that's going to look. So whether it's be t-shirts or toothpaste, it's really the same type of process. So once you've completed the, the merchandising piece, um, then you hand it over to the supply chain side, which is, of course, that piece is easier than, right? So it's either allocated or replenished or a combination of both. 
And again, speaking about different practices going forward, um, we're seeing retailers that are allocating less than the old 80%. They're allocating less. But what they're doing is they're putting their items on replenishment, even for short life cycle items. If it's for six to eight weeks, they're using JDA's demand and fulfillment um, to put those items on replenishment so that they can get the 40% or 20% of product, but get the stores to pull it. We don't want to allocate it. Right. I mean, that's the best case scenario. Let the forecast at the store level dictate where the re remaining product goes so that we get it to the right location. Um, so if you take it from there, then it goes into the store workforce management piece, which is looking at, okay, we take that one forecast again that we have, the enterprise-wide forecast. Okay, this is what we're going to sell for a week in this department. So if you take a sporting goods store, for example, that you know that Jane, when she works in the store, she has two children, she has patience so that she can work um, in the children's section. But she can only work um, 18 hours a week, and these are the days that she can work, these are the days that, they can't, that she can't. But what we can do is, at the department level for children's shoes, we can match that up with the forecast. So at the day level, at the hour level, so that we really, again, the second largest cost to a retailer is labor. So we can make sure that that labor is matched up to the demand plan, so we can optimize the demand plan and also the labor too. So, so basically, you know, we talk about markdowns. I think that's the, really the last resort that we want to do. Again, taking it full circle, we want to get the odd expression, the right products in the right place at the right time. It's understanding the consumer, taking the basket level data, point of sale data, using clustering, which is something that JDA does really well, is, is using clustering technology and clustering by attribute. When I was a buyer years ago, it used to be, you were know, going back a long time, but it used to be very, very ba basic then. It would be by different grades of store based on size which is no good today. And so we can, JDA has the power to, to plan and to segment by attribute. So that could be by um, demographics, it could be by location, it could be by back to school because different parts of the country goes back to school at different times. Um, it could be by, by weather, at different levels in the hierarchy. So women's clothing could be different to children's clothing. So it's really trying to get down to that lower level to making sure that you've got the right product in the right store. So you really don't have to mark down as much as you used to, because you're really leaving money on the table when you mark down. Um, but if we really do have to mark down again, it's coming back to having that plan, understanding what you're buying, and making sure that you've got those hurdle rates. Because if you don't take a, a mark down today, chances are if you leave it, it's gonna cost you more money potentially, because you're gonna have to mark it down further, because you're gonna have a shorter window to sell it. So it's really it's forewarned, it's beforearmed, it's making sure that you've got the information, understand the consumer, get the product in the right stores, um, understand the pricing and promotions that go with that as well, but also understanding this is my window to sell these items, and again, linking it to fulfillment. When, am I, when are the replacement items coming in, or the items that I need the space for, when, when, are the, when does that season start? And making sure that you mark down um, as little as possible, and, and it's all planned, and again, linked to the supply chain. Mm -hmm.